Hey, Peter J. Pollock, MD with Ocala Eye with some more of your LASIK questions. This question today is, has anyone ever gone blind due to LASIK surgery? Well, I'm a LASIK surgeon, and I've also undergone the procedure myself about 20 years ago. And yes, I can still see just fine. So I can give you the perspective from both the surgeon and the patient. It's a very safe procedure. Before we start, we have to define what blindness is. So to the layperson, blindness is 2200 or worse vision. This may be able to be repaired and regain vision again. But to the ophthalmologist, blindness means that the eye has lost the ability to see and cannot be repaired. So when an eye doctor is talking about blindness, it's pretty darn serious and also very rare. As far as LASIK, there are two kinds of complications. Number one, intraoperative during the surgery. And number two, postoperative after the surgery. So let's start with intraoperative, problems that occur during the procedure. There are two parts to the LASIK procedure. First is the flap creation, and second is the refractive procedure. First is flap creation. If there's something that's going to go terribly wrong during the procedure, it would more likely be related to the flap creation. This is where a flap is cut, traditionally with a blade, but more recently with a laser, in the cornea, and the tissue is peeled back. When LASIK was first developed in the early 1990s, the device that cut the flap, called a microkeratome, had to be assembled by the surgeon at the time of the surgery. One critical piece separated the blade from the rest of the device. Think about a wood plane for shaving a plank of wood. Unfortunately, there were a couple of cases reported where the spacer was either put in wrong or not put in at all. The result was that rather than cutting a thin flap, the device actually sliced into the eye. Those cases required emergency surgery to repair the laceration. To my recollection, however, these did not result in blindness but they did significantly affect the vision. Fortunately, modern microkeratomes come pre-built and they only need the blade inserted, so it's impossible for them to do this. Now the flap is more commonly being performed with a different kind of laser called a femtosecond laser. It performs microperforations, which are then bluntly dissected by the surgeon. If the surgeon does not like the appearance or depth of the laser ablation, they can abort the second part of the procedure. If they use poor judgment, though, and attempt to lift a poorly ablated flap, there could be problems with the vision after. The second part of the procedure is called the refractive procedure. After the flap is lifted, if things have gone well so far, another kind of laser called an eczema laser is used to remove a small amount of corneal tissue. The amount of tissue depends on the degree of correction desired. The lasers use sophisticated software to do this while the surgeon watches through the microscope. Most lasers have tracking mechanisms to follow small eye movements. Larger eye movements result in the laser shutting off temporarily. In earlier versions that did not have eye trackers, the treatment could be decentered, resulting in blurry vision, sometimes requiring another treatment to correct it. So there's very little chance for this step to cause major problems. The second kind of complication is called postoperative, and this occurs after surgery. If there's something that could potentially lead to blindness after LASIK, or any other eye surgery, it would most likely happen after the surgery, not during. Number one, infection. This is the most serious. Patients are on antibiotic drops for about one week after the surgery and are advised to refrain from swimming, yard work, working with animals, etc. In other words, common sense. You just had eye surgery, so cool it for a week or so. Most infections of the eye actually come from your own body. A serious infection could cause severe damage to the cornea in rare cases requiring a corneal transplant. But as serious as this is, it would not necessarily result in blindness. The infection would have to penetrate into the eye in order to cause actual blindness. This is known as endophthalmitis. Number two, traumatic loss of the flap. Getting poked in the eye with a tree branch or a motor vehicle accident, these are the kinds of things that could rip off a flap. But I've seen some pretty bad injuries and the flaps at worst were just dislocated and could be repositioned back into place. Worst case scenario, the flap is ripped off and lost. The surface of the eye would heal over and then the patient would either wear a contact lens to see or they would have to have PRK laser procedure to get corrected again. Number three, diffuse lamellar keratitis, also known as Sands of Sahara syndrome. This is an inflammatory condition affecting the interface, which is the space underneath the flap, and is caused by different factors such as chemicals, or detergents used on surgical instruments. It's less common now as the known factors have been eliminated from use for the most part, but it could result in damage to the flap, especially if it's not detected early by the surgeon 
and treated promptly. So now you can go get your LASIK procedure and not worry so much. Make sure the surgeon is experienced and it is being performed in a reputable place. Don't price shop for the cheapest deal. These are your eyes we're talking about here. For more information, visit ocalaeye.com forward slash Peter dash Pollock dash MD or give us a call at 352-290-8374.